Hello, Internet. It's time for a bonus Wednesdays serial. Because you didn't get one last week. Again, sorry. I'm gonna work on that. But... Sometimes, sometimes, the YouTube comments section is totally worth it. What I'm talking about is that Reader1717 posted this amazing video essay of her thoughts of Wonder Woman, which I disagree with about half of it. Um, she's not wrong. <laughs> I'm certainly not wrong. But her, her views on the character are different, and in some ways I think our views on like maybe feminism versus humanism playing in are affecting our views on the character, and that's influencing how we're viewing a lot of the stuff around Wonder Woman. And it, we got into this comment, YouTube comment thing, talking on the internet, one might just say. And a lot of it was really interesting. Um, and because uh, I don't feel that we're going to have the time to do an actual hangout and talk about it, which sucks. Probably mostly because she has kids and she has better things to do with her time. And partially because I drink, which drives me to you guys. I just thought I'd um, kind of put some of it up there, and I'm not going to try to speak for her, but read some of what she said to me. I don't I'm not do it anything. It, it's not crossing any lines. It's just um, kind of different viewpoints on Wonder Woman. So, and I just wanted to talk about because this is really awesome and fascinating. So the f first and biggest thing is that um, it took me a long time to warm up to the Azarello run on Wonder Woman, which is effectively done now. Um, Tear for me, yeah, hooray for her, apparently. She was not a big fan of the run. Um, she felt it took away some of the pro-feminist side, and of course you can't talk about Wonder Woman without talking about how she's a feminist fictional figure. She's important to that movement. I mean, she was on the cover of the first Miss Magazine when they took away her powers. It was uh, the feminist coalition that wrote in and were so upset about it that made sure that she got her powers back, though given that how long that run was, I have a feeling that might have been happening anyways with DC editorial, they might have just sped it up a bit. I, I don't know. I, I don't know about comics at that time. I just... The way comics work lead me to that thought. Uh, and you, you can't really divorce the two anymore. Um, of course, with Wonder Woman's history, of course, her creator, the inventor of the polygraph, True, which explains the lasso of truth, also was a weird guy who believed in polyamorous relationships, um, believed in bondage, and a lot of that imagery and stuff is in Wonder Woman. That's a lot of why she's locked up. On the flip side of that, she was always able to kind of break her bondage usually and it was you know pro f women in a way but at the same time there's a lot of imagery of women in S or Wonder Woman really in S&M positions and stuff and it's I don't know if that initial stuff was so pro feminist in the end really but the character certainly has evolved and done a lot since then so there's no question about that and the slightly later history, though the origins are, at least in my mind, and I think in most people's, a bit shaky. But one of the things Reader uh, didn't like about this, uh, about Azarello's run, w was the fact that, as opposed to being the clay um, Greek myth made of whatever, and then had goddesses imbue powers upon Wonder Woman in the land of no men. Uh, it, instead, it took a man to create her, and because of that transition, though, she becomes a god, goddess. Um, 
but but suddenly a man is in her creation and there there have been she's not the only one to argue this and doing that you're, you're taking away some of the feminist power of wonder woman that it's not solely created by essentially essentially gaia and you know mother earth and women only and that her birth transcends normal means and all that and it's a feminist deal. and I understand the power of that um, I understand that idea of goddesses and I mean the idea predates our society but I also don't necessarily think the re imagining of her origin to say that she was actually birthed but she was a god which kind of also explains how she's frankly so dominant over even all the Amazons in Power Glass. I know there's been some give and take on that, but for the most part, she's not just an Amazon warrior. I mean, she's flying, immortal. She's The only reason she wasn't a goddess so far is because the label wasn't on her, and making her a goddess makes more sense to me. But to say that she was birthed doesn't I just can't see that as being anything less. It makes her more of a character. It gives her a father, which obviously with the story is problematic, but it it doesn't put her in such a weird position. It, it, it gives her more of a grounding, and not that relatability is necessarily such a big worry, but it makes her as a character a little easier to key into. She has this dysfunctional family, and now she's built up a dysfunctional family around her, and that's another cool thing is Azarello has these people around Wonder Woman, which prior runs haven't been so great with. And I just don't see the fact that someone being born should take away anything from them. And it's kind of a weird thing to be even looking at, because obviously this is only the sort of thing you can look at with such a bizarre fictional character. <laughs> but the, the next biggest level that we started talking about was the inevitable comparison sort of deal, right? So Wonder Woman is considered one of the Trinity. She's considered not only DC's biggest female character and basically the biggest female character in comics, but yeah, um, she is... The tr she's part of the Trinity. So, big deal, right? But she doesn't, in a lot of ways, measure up to Batman or Superman. Superman, I feel, is an easier, better, more reliable comparison for this. Saying that she doesn't have, like, the mythos, the popularity, or the whatever of Batman is stupid to me no comic character does right now or for the past history modern history really can measure up no other character except for maybe spider-man can boast that amount of multimedia presence that amount of interest and that amount of whatever and have that much corporate push or whatever and that's that's just no, that's an impossible comparison. No character measures up. Of course Wonder Woman doesn't do that. And so... But... The thing is, is why can't Wonder Woman get closer to that, at least to Superman, or arguably, like, Spider-Man Wolverine stature? Um, my biggest thing is she doesn't really seem to have any side characters. Peter Parker has, you know, the Mary Jane, the Aunt May, um, depending on the run, where neighbors, kind of some rotating cast, but I mean, always, like, J. Jonah Jameson and, you know, the Bugle staff, um, they usually find a way to work at least some of those in, no matter where Spider-Man is in his life, and a few others, like I said, rotating, but there's always a side cast, and he also has a rogues gallery to draw on, villains that you can bring back and are known, and kind of make a statement. Same deal with Batman, lesser on the side, side cast. There, there's been some and some notable ones, and obviously you have at least James Gordon, and usually at least the sidekick or whatever. 
um, Superman, same deal, you know, the planet, um, Mom, Pa, <laughs> you got then the whole Krypton mythos and whatever. Wonder Woman, though? Where, where does Wonder Woman rest? And this has always been my biggest problem with Wonder Woman. She's an impossible character. I mean, yeah, we can figure out her origin. She was, no matter how you slice it, on Paradise Island, trained up in this island of woman. Steve Trevor accidentally comes in and then takes her back to the land of man and she decides to stay to do the right thing more or less that's more or less the accepted origin story of Wonder Woman but I mean that's that's not anything nearly as powerful or as informative to her character as pretty much any other superhero created Hell, Howard the Duck has a better, more inciting event than Wonder Woman does. So, so her motivation is more or less to do good, but it's not ever captured right. So she's imparting better values because she was raised on Paradise Island. But what exactly are those values? Um, I, it's kind of nebulously obvious what you want, you know, truth, liberty, justice, that sort of thing, but it's not very clear, and she always has this contradiction of trying to do the right thing, be fighting for peace, but totally a warrior on the other hand, and the mitigation between those two has been tossed up and played with over the years, and there's no clear line on where she should be except for creative run to creative run so that's okay but that's okay that gives the character some contradiction and some interesting room of play and that could be her strength it was ever really truly played up in a lot of ways but it's not it rarely is played up that well it has been but again rarely as to her side cast, um, classically, you know, I mean, Steve Trevor, kind of, but he more or less disappears, usually not too far after the origin, usually, right? Um, Roman history isn't the best. Uh, but who else? And I mean, I know she has, like, the invisible jet. Um, and she's gone through some phases she's been around forever I mean so but Batman's gone through tons of phases but the Batman ones are usually more definitive I mean here's kind of goofy here's kind of more serious here's the dark whatever and they kind of focus on different aspects of the character Wonder Woman doesn't have different aspects to focus on necessarily she's kind of just Wonder Woman they kind of introduced the secret identity but what that secret identity is has not been stable for more than usually a decade. Then who's her rogues gallery? Cheetah and Ares, basically, right? I, after that, I mean, I know she has villains, and I mean, there's a fair amount of Professor Ivo, I guess. I mean, if you dig and you know it's there, but she doesn't have really definable or memorable villains for the most part and no superhero no superhero can get far on their own they need the supporting cast they need the villains and frankly to the credit of the character i think wonder woman is the one hero that has gotten the furthest without those things just on the merit of Wonder Woman alone she has gone that far basically kind of a uh, demographic thing in a way uh, 
which kind of sucks, and that's not what you're looking for in your representative. You want them to earn it. That's why usually, if it's the first one character, they have to be the best. They have to really stand out. And Ruben's done a lot of things. A lot of people love the TV show. A lot of people really like her presence on the old Justice League cartoon. A lot of people like Wonder Woman. Not as many of those read the comics. <laughs> or like the comics as much. And there's good reasons why, like here. But, um, yeah, so there's all that. <laughs> to that end, though, that's a lot of the reason why I like the Azarello run. She supports herself with uh, Zola and Zola's child. She has ties to Orion and the new gods, and she also, I mean, she has a much greater tie, frankly, to the Amazons in a way, and also to the Greek gods, which also sets up villains but not villains which kind of works great for Wonder Woman because if they need to play back and let her be a god they can easily roll back and then the Greek stuff can just as easily not happen for a while but then just as easily come back when a new god of war is introduced or you want to play with a different god and you can tell a lot of different stories that way and you can also introduce new villains as kind of maybe the puppets of these gods or whatnot as Wonder Woman has to play on both sides as she's now a god, though you can't really introduce a new god of war. <laughs> you could, and just you're gonna take a story or two to get there. Um, but she plays in that realm, and also on the superhero realm with the regular people. And so she kind of has to do double duty, and you can play on that in a lot of ways. And that's the thing, is that this run opens up a lot of story potential, whereas previous attempts haven't really taken with any of that. The Straczynski run, which we just came off of, which was another origin redone, then we launched right into another one. Uh, it, it, it didn't take, and it sucked, frankly. No one. Did anyone like it? Someone had to have liked it, but obviously, it went nowhere. Um, there was the Gail Simone run pretty much right before that, and that didn't... Um, hold a lot of ground either. I really enjoyed that run, and I really hope that they bring back the character of Genocide, but, but, essentially it's just a one-off film from a long story, and that was kind of the big contribution that Gail Simone could have made, and it would be good if they brought that character back, because all they have to do is one fairly bigger story with it, and then suddenly Wonder Woman has another memorable villain. I think that enough is... <laughs> good to push. Uh, and before that, there was a string of, um, I, th I think it was a string of female novelists kind of coming on Wonder Woman, just trying to write Wonder Woman stories and bring up that. The truth is, is that there's no real direction for Wonder Woman. That was the other great thing about this Azarello run with the New 52, was Wonder Woman had a direction, and they were going with it, and then DC had to hamper it with all the other books essentially writing another character. But part of the reason that they did have to do that was because people wanted the old Wonder Woman back. And I understand why. She's a figure. She's part of Americana. But story-wise, it wasn't working, and it hadn't been working for years, and something had to give. And DC pushed out. <laughs> You need to stick to your guns if you're going to pull something like that. Otherwise, you just end up watering everything down and making everyone sour that you even came so close and then failed so spectacularly. So, in the coming months, we will see where Wonder Woman goes. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm hoping whatever it is works out for the best, but given the names of the project, I have little hope, and frankly, after that sensational Wonder Woman comic last week, I have even less hope because Gail Simone can't even seem to pull off this character anymore. I just, I think the idea of Wonder Woman is greater than the execution of Wonder Woman. And 
we need a Wonder Woman Reborn. We need a Wonder Woman Year One. We need a, you know, Doomsday event. We need, and frankly, I know we all bitch about it, but what if they did kill Wonder Woman? and rebirthed her, and made a deal of it, and made it work within the, you know, Greek god framework. Kind of like they did with Thor, and since they have, Thor's been a lot better accepted than he was before for years. I, I think this is a time where you use that trick, that dog and pony show, because it seems to work in a lot of ways for a lot of characters, and this is one where it really fit, and we haven't. And my last big point, and I think if people want to see Wonder Woman succeed, I think they need to realize that the character needs some time to be a character and not an icon, because the foundation isn't there anymore. And DC needs a new female mascot. They need a new female character to kind of put up front and center. And they've tried to add some. They they really push Katana. Everybody remembers that, right? They push Katana hard. They put her in teams. They gave her her own series. They put her in something else. They put her in Green Arrow. Like, make this character. They just kept throwing the character because they knew they needed the demographic. People complained about them not doing enough female characters. They tried. They, they pushed. They invested on <laughs> books that weren't selling to push that character to get that out there. And it didn't happen. And from my, well, my understanding was decent comics but nothing that was blowing everyone away and so no one cared and they went to go buy Batman or bat related whatever um i think dc needs to focus and push black canary she seems to be the one female character that was coming up and they f were pushing for a real hard right before flashpoint and she was leading the justice league um she was really making her own stride she was in a fairly popular smaller team book birds of prey and they gave her a, like a mini of her own stint and whatnot, and it, my recollection was it did all right. And I feel like this new Black Canary that they have in this post-Flashpoint stuff, not so much. But if they really kind of refocused and made a good book, maybe got a little more daring artist, because you can do it, because uh, it would be kind of a martial arts crime book, inevitably. I think you could really make that work. Um, and kind of where we're, at, we're in a space now where she almost has to be <laughs> divorced of Green Arrow. So I really think that character could sing if you let her. Just my two cents there. <laughs>